Welcome to the channel. So today we're going to get the Dana 60s ready to be put under the Jeep. So first thing we got to do is get rid of some of these old mounts. Uh, we won't be using them. We'll be putting the Jeep's cool springs. We'll have to do something about the spring perches. Uh, I think this was the old shock mounts. We'll be cutting them off. Uh, i got to get a new steering stabilizer. On this side, I gotta do the same thing. Cut these mounts here off, and these. I've already took the cover off. Got all the fluids drained. Probably gonna go through this and make sure all the seals are good. I do have all new brake calipers for uh, both of these axles. So first things first, I'm gonna start cutting these mounts off. Then we'll go from there. So I've decided since this Jeep's lifted and while I've got everything out, might as well go ahead and do a control arm drop. Now you can either do long arms or you can do a control arm drop brackets. And this will correct your control arm angles. The higher you lift the Jeep, the farther the axle pushes back. And that makes your control arm angles worse, which will decrease ride quality and it'll limit a bunch of things so I picked up these control arm drop brackets should be pretty easy to install especially while I got everything out then I was kinda worried about losing some ground clearance but doing that versus long arms I don't think it's gonna be a whole lot of difference I'd rather the low point be closer to the front axle than towards the middle you got your drop brackets, you got a brace, then you got your hardware, then you also got these pieces which is part of the upper control arms. Alright so I'm going to slide this axle out of the way so I can get in here and put these brackets on real fast. First things first we need to remove the lower control arm. So now I need to remove the alignment spacer. Just two bolts on the back side. So now we'll remove the upper control arm. You got a bolt in there to remove. It's a 9 sixteenths. Then you need to remove that nut right there. So now that that's out of the way, we'll take our drop bracket. Here's the, here's the passenger side. We'll just slide that up in there. And you got a bolt and a sleeve. And you install the sleeve in between that. So now we got the side bracket to install. This helps tie into your uh, upper control arms. So you also get a bolt of that, another sleeve. And you need to install this bolt right there in the frame then right between there that's where you'll put your sleeve so to put the side bracket on we're going to have to tie into that first bolt we put in and then the top bolt where the control arm used to mount so this bracket installs like this goes just like this and right there is where you're going to install the new upper control arm all right so i'll just hand tighten these and i'll wait till we get everything on here to tighten them down now they give you new bolts to install right up here where the alignment bracket was it's going to go right in here and you got two bolts at the in to reinstall. Now that our alignment bracket's in, we can now go ahead and install the upper control arm. Now I end up having to cut the bolts off because that's pretty bad shape, so I had to get some new ones. 
So let's install the upper control arm. Now these drop brackets also come with these braces. They would install just like that. But I'm getting ready to do a frame stiffener, so I'm going to hold off on that part. Okay, so I got the truss sitting about where it needs to be. They even have that cut out for your breather hose there. So they make this top part where this top piece can pull up. And they've got little spots here. And I'm gonna go ahead and tack those areas. And I think the reason they make this top piece removable so after you get these bottom pieces welded you can pull this up and be able to get it inside of it but I don't really see any reason to weld the inside because I believe that welding the outside of these I believe that should be strong enough but I'm gonna go ahead and tack those areas because I don't believe there's any reason to pull that back off to weld the inside of that so we got all the paint grinded off the axle so now we'll be ready to go ahead and start tacking stuff on and get ready to weld everything up as you see i went ahead and welded a little bit of that up that just keeps the bottom plates from moving on me and one thing too when i weld these up i'll probably start on one end and i'll work my way to the other end That'll just help keep from warping the axle because that'll um, not put a lot of heat in one area. Alright, I'm going to line this up and go ahead and weld it on there. And also one thing to mention, I'm going to wait and weld on this casting last because I need to heat that up to about 300 degrees before I can do any welding on that. Now we'll flip the axle upside down and I'll tack the other side. Just make it a little bit easier to get to. Now I kind of got that tacked on there. Now we can go ahead and tack on our coil brackets. And then we'll sit right up against the truss. And this one here, I did, I did have to cut just a little bit off the casting to make this coil bracket fit right. As you can see, there's a little groove right there, and that's for it to fit in place right there on the axle. So I did have to cut just a little bit off that, and now that sits on there pretty good. Now one thing I am going to do to make sure both of these coil brackets sit on there the same way I'm going to set a level and an angle finder on here just to make sure these both sit the same way <clears throat> okay so this coil bracket sitting right on dead zero so we need to make sure we get this one on zero also. Now we're ready to put our top pieces on for the coil brackets. Just for the coil buckets. You just put these pieces on top of each other. And they'll sit just like that. 
bracket. And once you get it centered the way you want it, go ahead and tack it on. Now we'll install our shock pieces. These are the tabs for the shocks. Uh, you can adjust these. These will slide back and forth. It allows you to run different size shocks. So I got a new set of shocks. So I'm going to take the bushing and I'm going to line that in there. That way I know what size to put in the bracket. <clears throat> Alright, so I got that lined up the way I want it. As you can see, I got a little bit of room to play between the bushing. So I'm going to go ahead and take that boat back out and go ahead and tack that on there. Same thing on this side. Next piece upper control arm mounts. As you can see there's little tabs. Those will just slide right in. And there's also a little area for a grease fitting. And I'll probably put that towards the front so I can get to that better with the grease gun. I made it just a little bit wider on the top, that way I can get the grease gun in there better. Now we'll do our passenger side upper control arm mount. Going just like that, also has some tabs, and you got this piece to slide onto. Now we're installing our uh, track bar mount. So I've got that measured where all three of those is the inch and five eight. So I pretty much got everything tacked on here. Uh, the only thing I ain't gonna put on is the sway bar mounts, but if we ever want to which most likely I won't. I've got pieces for that too. I've got little tabs right there. So I've got the bushings in. Uh, That's pretty easy. I just able to take a hammer and just gently tap them in. So everything's basically tacked besides the lower control arm mounts. And I'm gonna wait and do that last. Cause I need to roll this under the Jeep and figure out exactly where I'm going to put them. So the instructions say to put the lower control arm mounts as far out on the axle as you can go. So my lower control arms was the fixed ones. They didn't have any heim joints in them. So I went and purchased a set of adjustable lower control arms from Rubicon Express and they have a heim joint in it. And I'm thinking that will allow it to move over enough so I can put them on the edge. So here is the new adjustable control arms. I wanted the adjustable ones. That way I could adjust the angle of the axle the way I need it. And I went ahead and spent a little bit of extra money and got adjustable upper control arms too. Because the kit says that these mounts right here are three inches higher in the factory. All right, so I got the axle under the Jeep. I went ahead and put the upper control arms on so the axle will be lined up where I needed that. And now, now I got the lower control arm brackets on the lower control arms. That way I can put it up here and get it lined up. And then I'll tack it on. As soon as I do both sides, I'll pull the axle back out, weld everything up, and I'll be ready to paint the axle. So everything is completely welded up now. 
just gotta let it cool off because it's still pretty warm then I'm gonna start putting a coat of primer on everything then I put a couple coats of paint on the axle so I just got done painting this axle put a coat of primer and about two coats of regular paint so I'm very happy with this kit I would definitely recommend this kit if you're wanting to put a one-ton axle in your Jeep. Very easy to install. Highly recommend this. Okay, so as you can see, I got the Jeep turned around. The front axle is in. So I didn't want to bore you guys to death and show step-by-step -step how to install the axle. So there are a few things I did do. I did get a new set of coil spring. There's nothing wrong with the old ones. Just with this uh, bumper and winch. It definitely had the front end squatted down a little bit. So I bought these. They got a little bit higher spring rating. And it definitely uh, does a lot better with that. These are the Rubicon Express five and a half inch springs. And I did go ahead and get some longer shocks. Now, the other one just really wasn't long enough. And I wanted it to be able to flex a little better. So I picked up the Skyjacker Hydro 7000 series. And we'll see how those do. And after I get the frame stiffeners welded on, I need to weld a little bracket so I can hold my brake line back. So it ain't just hanging there. So with this kit, this made it basically a direct bolt up. Only thing I really had to do was shorten the track bar just a little bit. And that's just because of the way these mounts are. It's really optional how you want the mounts, but it was no big deal to shorten that track bar. I just had to shorten it, I think about three inches. And then this is the factory Jeep pitman arm. I did have to drill that out just a little bit so I get that boat on there. But other than that, this was basically a direct boat up with this RTEC kit. As you can see, I got the adjustable control arms, upper and lower. Got those on. I still want to go through it and put some new seals in it and kind of go through it just a little bit make sure everything's okay and I've got to modify the drive line just a little bit say so this front is at least 95% done really ain't much left to do and I'll review this once I get everything finished So I believe that's going to do it for the front axle. I hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more.